it's so much easier when you just write everything down and it's already written and you just look at it and that's it. Like this makes it just all the harder. And I feel like this is definitely what we're going to do next time specifically for the info session because this event is quite important and I don't want to misinform anyone yeah. or give anyone any false ideas or false outlooks or views. So yeah. Um, so the last issue that I want to speak on is the international conflicts, uh, wars, occupations, as well as sanctions which are happening currently. So uh, the Ukraine is where I was born and raised. So uh, we're currently being invaded by Russia, unfortunately. It's a very troubling event, especially since I still have my family there or <clears throat> in the capital, which is under a state of emergency. But I don't want to be too self-focused or focused on that area specifically because the same occupation, sanctions and bombardments and invasions, airstrikes have been happening for many, many years to many other different places. If you look at Iraq, Iran, currently there are bombardments happening uh, in Yemen, Saudi airstrikes, and the US has just decided to put sanctions on Yemen, to press some sanctions on Yemen, as well as Russia, for obviously the invasion on Ukraine. Do I support those uh, acts? Of course not. I don't want the Russian people to suffer for their dictator's actions. I don't want, as a matter of fact, I don't want anyone to suffer, none of the working class people to suffer because of the actions of the elites. Because uh, we have to specifically look at what the leaders have done and understand the reactions of the people. So just wanted to say that uh, I personally, st I stand in solidarity with the anti-war demonstrators in Russia. I stand with anti-war demonstrators and activists everywhere, especially yeah, no. the ones who have been arrested and jailed. Like right now, there are, have, I believe there are like over 2,000 arrests happening, over 2,000 arrests happening in Russia. Because as far as I learned, the mass gatherings and protests were banned, so they're not allowed to be happening anymore. So the police there are doing some brutal things. and. Um, yeah, so the Russian airstrikes keep on happening. They keep bombing uh, social housing, actually, as well. Uh, yeah. Places, people's buildings, and uh, so on. Uh, many of them are fleeing to uh, underground uh, places like Bagzal and so on. So the situation uh, escalated really, really fast, especially since we actually saw the signs of the earlier Russian activity in the military uh, in the previous two weeks at least. And I expected myself to actually, for there to be some kind of, I don't know, invasion or something like that. But I didn't think that despite all of these signs, there would actually be an invasion because all eyes were on Russia and what they do. So I didn't think that that they would take the risk. So Russia is guilty, no doubt. Actually, Putin is guilty, I'm sorry. Not all Russians. I also would like to recognize the actions of US, NATO, and Canada, who have been funding the uh, paramilitaries in, uh, in Ukraine, neo-Nazi paramilitaries, like, like the Azov Battalion, uh, C-14, which are basically a street gang of neo-Nazis, not affiliated with any of the government organizations or the Ministry of Interior. But they're standing on their own and they're doing just as much damage as uh, Azov is doing. Back in 2018, I believe, if I'm not wrong, Azov was raiding the Roma camps that were located, I believe, in the woods. And they, they raided them, they destroyed everything with hammers, with anything that they could find, and then they celebrated their so-called victory over the immigrants. Um, and I've had many arguments and conversations on this topic, and specifically on the fact that being the Ukrainian myself, people always assumed that I would take side uh, with the 
Ukrainian state, the armed forces, the National Guard, just because I have like these inherent like nationalist aspirations. That's not the fact. I stand against the Ukrainian state. I stand against all states. I think that this war is just an absolute waste of time. I think this is once again a case of uh, the political, uh, the class and the political elites playing their games, the political games, a show of power essentially as well in which regular people are always stuck in the middle and families are being hurt, killed. Uh, there were a couple of videos and news reports of actually uh, forced conscriptions to the military in between the ages of 18 to 60. So if you are a Ukrainian uh, citizen and you're in between those ages, you will be uh, forced to join the military. In fact, there are a lot of uh, s um, citizens and regular working class people, uh, even I think women, joined the military, the army, and they began ambushing the Russian tanks, yeah. airplanes, whatever they can. We also got word that uh, the Revolutionary Action, which is a Ukrainian underground anarchist organization, have uh, went to join the resistance forces of the people. So that means that they're not fighting with the Azov, they're fighting with the people nice. specifically, and I think they're standing on their own, so they have like their own independent uh, battle, the war front, which only they fight. I'm saying this just because in the previous years, from 2017 to 2019, Azov and Revdi had many fights. They clashed many times, and uh, because of this, I just do not see them standing as one together. So, mm. yeah, any alleged like perspectives or understandings that they might be united in one struggle it's absolutely false and that will not happen not by any means yeah but besides just the outlook of the military and their involvement and how all of this has unveiled itself what's really important to articulate is the effects of the war and what it has on the regular people who have been struggling have been fleeing have been running away i myself have uh two aunts who considered at first running away to the Czech Republic, I believe, one of them. Uh, there are open entries to Poland, but for whatever reason, they decided to actually stay in uh, Kiev to defend their homes, even though one of their homes was just bombed, completely destroyed. They've been bought, uh, they were bombing near my school as well, uh, near the region where I lived, so it's really, it's really, heartbreaking and sad but you know what happened has happened but i don't want this event to become a distraction i do not want this event to have the people being focused only on the war between the ukraine and russia i want people to also remember that there are airstrikes happening in syria by the israelis there are airstrikes happening in uh, yemen uh, sanctions being imposed on Yemen as well. As a matter of fact, it has been imposed for a while. Uh, the regime change in uh, Sudan, I think, uh, by the U.S. again, U.S. funded the military, and U.S. backed uh, the military, and the regime changed as a, there as well. Uh, uh, occupations of indigenous land and uh, so struggles against the invaders and occupiers have been happening all over the world and in some cases actually far longer than this has been happening. The signs of war in the Ukraine has been evident since 2014 so at some point I actually did expect them to invade but I didn't think that they would actually would not at least not now because all eyes were on Russia, or all the eyes were on uh, their actions specifically and what they were gonna do. They thought that they would actually invade, but they did. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we should really focus on how wars affect people. We should not see this as um, an outlook as in Russians or against uh, the Ukrainian people. We should not see this way. We should see this uh, for what it is, a political game in between the political elites who are playing, but they've always done the political game and the show of power because that's all they really care about, it's a show of power. True. And as long as this game exists, we can never take uh, their words just like this. 
I also strongly um, advise to follow up on uh, independent uh, the journalism and the reports that they did specifically, so like uh, the popular front, the Rose uh, Warfare and so on, the Renegade a Journal. So I would really recommend to stay away from the state media because they portray and represent uh, the conflict and the ongoing struggle from their uh, side of view. Especially to stay away from like all the American Fox News and so all those things. Um, to really follow up on independent uh, the journalism and understanding uh, the struggle firsthand by the reporters is really uh, important and I recognize that. So yeah, just uh, just a kind of reminder that airstrikes, bombings, demolitions have been uh, in Gaza, in Palestine, uh, Somalia. Uh, all of those wars have to be condemned and deposed. And um, deposed. So we should not focus only on uh, the Ukraine, not only on the European conflicts and struggles, but we should definitely bring the attention wider to a mass variety of conflicts and struggles that have been happening, especially the ones in which indigenous people of those lands have been put into such danger through the airstrikes. And honestly, it seems like wherever war happens, either NATO or the US always just go with it. Either it's backed by them